The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond and platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. My name is Matthew Connerton. I am a freelance developer and consultant up in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, I am going to talk about rapid Drupal development, which is really more rapid Drupal deployment um, with regards to what we're going to be talking about tonight uh, with the features module and a bunch of other modules we can use. So let's jump right in. What is a feature as defined by the features module? It's a collection of components that satisfy a use case. So if I think about, I want to create an events calendar for my website. Well, I, I got the events content type, the different CCK fields, maybe some images and image presets from a image cache. I got the views that display them, the dependencies on the calendar and date module, um, the context for laying out the blocks on the side of the calendar that I want to show. All of this creates one thing, an events calendar. So when you go to create your events calendar, you have to manually go in and click all this. Well, what Features does is it lets you gather all this together and pull it together into a single module that you can call the events module. And what you can do is you can take this module and put it on a Drupal site, any Drupal site you want, and when you turn it on, it will automatically create all those different components for you. So right away, you're saving that first X amount of hours of site clicking. Um, I'm, I'm a, like I said, a freelance developer, and so I'm working with lots of different clients, and really I'm building the same websites over and over again. They want a news, they want a blog section, a photo gallery, all these different things, and what makes it easier for me to get the website out there faster and provide a lower cost is it doesn't take me as long, because I use features. I drop the photo gallery feature in there. I drop the news uh, section feature, I drop the blog feature, I drop the events calendar feature. So uh, that's, in a nutshell, what the features module does. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We'll see you now. All right. So the differences between modules that are created by features and regular Drupal modules are these three points at the bottom. The code is generated. It's not written by hand. Um, when you click the Create a Feature button, it's creating that code for you, and it's going to pop a download link and say, here's your Drupal module. Um, these features are collecting functionality versus with the Drupal module, you're creating new functionality, you're hooking into other modules to tie functionality together. And a great thing about features is they're fantastic for beginners, people who aren't developers, aren't really, don't know how to create an events calendar from scratch. You can say, well, you know, just go over to this feature server, download this module, and you have an events calendar. You have a, a photo gallery. You have a real estate slideshow listing module. So uh, there's two reasons you can use features. Uh, these aren't the two only reasons, but these are two main reasons. One is going to be for fast and easy reuse of code. If you're building a lot of websites for a lot of different clients, you can build them faster using features because you're, you're, you're writing that code once and then you're just reusing it over and over again on different Drupal sites. Uh, the second way to use features is for advanced deployment and that's all that dev, the staging, the production stuff, everything's gotta be in code. I'm not gonna talk about that, but if you have questions about that and wanna learn more about configuration and code, you can ask me after. Um, Eric Webb actually did a session about that earlier today. <sighs> okay, so live demo, we're gonna go ahead and create a feature right now. We'll create some content types and CCK fields and all that jazz and pull it together and install it on another Drupal site. So here is the features project page. You can go there, it has all this fantastic information. Um, everything I'm gonna show you is gonna be under Drupal 6. Uh, from what I understand, more or less, it works pretty much the same with Drupal 7. Uh, the UI is basically the same, your collection fun collecting functionality. You still need the features module you, uh, when you add new features to other sites. Uh, I don't know too many limitations. I think there might be some upgrade path uh, issues um, highlighted right here as far as from betas. I don't know about Drupal 6 to 7. Anyway, 
Is that getting the edge of my screen over here? Yes. All right. So here is my Drupal Camp South Carolina features. Um, we're going to do an image gallery feature because that's easy. I got a galleries page over here. Uh, simple view with all my gallery content types. You click on one. I got recent comments in the side. Here are individual image nodes uh, with the view that's being attached to this content type and light box. And this is a quick and easy image gallery. So let's see how it's made. We got two content types, image gallery and image. Uh, if we look at the image gallery, it's pretty simple. It has a title. If we look at the uh, image node, we got an image field and a node reference. So when you create a new image, put it in this gallery. Very rudimentary. Um, we got some image cache presets. I got a thumbnail for when it's displayed below the uh, node, a nice preview when it's above. Um, I'm using the context module to place the recent comments in the right-hand side. That's not the context module. That's the context module. To place the uh, modules in the right-hand side, who does not know what the context module is or does? The context module, my friend, is a condition and reaction module. And so I can set conditions like if I'm viewing an image gallery, the reaction is going to be put the recent comments in the sidebar. And so it's a completely different way of placing blocks on your website versus the built-in Drupal way. Uh, I, I haven't used the built-in Drupal way since context came out. So I got the context and let's see, what else do we got? We got views. Let's go look at the view. I got a gallery view here. If I edit it, I got two displays. One is the image galleries, which grabs my image galleries and toss them in lists, and then I got the node content, which gets me my images, uh, and I'm using the content argument gallery, which is getting it from the URL. Fancy pantsy doesn't matter. All of this is coming together to make one thing, and it's an image gallery. When I create my next site, I don't want to have to rebuild all of that from scratch, create content. So we're going to gather it all up into a feature right now. So. Go download the module, turn the module on, you get site build features, and you can now manage and create your features. It comes with a test feature. I've honestly never even turned it on. I think it just creates a content type or something and shows you how it works. Um, I don't know. So we're gonna name our feature image gallery. It's gonna give it a machine name of image underscore gallery. If you wanna change that to something else, you can. Um, Description is going to be super awesome image gallery. You can give it a version number. I'll say it's 6.x.2.0. And then the update URL, we can ignore for now. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. So that's the basic information about my feature, which is the same basic information every module has, a name, a description, and the machine-readable name of the feature. Uh, the module. So let's take a look at the components. Uh, I like to start with content types. So I want to add the image gallery content type. Whoa, so what happened here is I selected, I want to add image gallery to my feature and it automatically came over here and said, this is everything that we're automatically detecting that I want to export with your feature. Um, all of these site variables via strong arm, I'll talk about that in a bit, the content type image gallery and the dependencies. So now if I turn on image, now it's going to grab those CCK fields. It's saying, hey, this content type has CCK fields. It grabs more settings, and now it has more dependencies, image field, node reference. Now I want to come into context, and I'm going to grab galleries. That's going to add more into my uh, downloads. Image cache presets. I want both of these. Let's turn those on. Let's grab, uh, which I think, nope, they won't. All right, let's go down to views. Let's get my view. And if you guys have any questions, I'm going to go kind of fast so I can get through a lot of stuff. Um, just shout them out, raise your hand, throw a shoe at me, I don't care. Uh, so I'm grabbing the view. Um, and so we can also take a look here at what else we can download. Uh, CCK. Uh, is obviously the CCK fields, context, dependencies. I can declare 
just like a normal module can say, hey, this model, module depends on that one, you can do the same thing here. Um, this is useful for things like Lightbox. Adding that view, that display handler for that field, doesn't get detected by the feature module, so I need to make sure Lightbox gets turned on slash depended on when I install this module. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and just go click crazy because I want the UIs to be turned on when I show you guys this in the other site. That's good enough for me. And so we got our image cache presets, uh, menus, you can export entire menu definitions, the, the menu links that go in those menus, content types we talked about. What's up? We're gonna download, uh, we got permissions, all of your permissions can be ex exported, so when you click one of these, it's gonna store whether this permission is on or off for each of your roles. You can download your roles. You can download, uh, export. Um, Strongarm is an additional module I installed, which is groups.drupal.org slash strongarm, and what that lets you do is export site variables. Anything that's in your variable table, this long, long table can be exported. So the site name, the site slogan, you know, anything. There's, there's a crap ton of variables on a real Drupal site. And so I have downloaded, I'm sorry, I've selected everything I wanna export with this feature, I've named it, I'm gonna hit the download button, and boom, I have a new feature. Let's put this on the desktop. And we will crank this thing open. So here is my module, and like I said, it's just like any other Drupal module, more or less, we can go ahead and take a peek at the info file and see what's going on here. Uh, Drupal 6, here are all those dependencies I asked for, and then the rest of this stuff is the features module. It's what tells the features module, hey, I'm a feature, and this is everything that's inside of me. Um, and so there's all that stuff, and then down at the bottom, we see, uh, normal Drupal module stuff, the name, the package, if you wanted to put it under your custom code, you can put it under features, whatever you wanna do, it doesn't matter. The project name, uh, the status URL, what the status URL does is uh, you download a module and then a security update comes out on the update status page, it says, hey, there's a new release over on Drupal.org. Well, what the, this lets you do is say, if you update this feature later and you've put it on your feature server, which I'll show you later, it will show that, say, in your update status, hey, there's an update available for this feature if you want to download it. So if we take a look at the, uh, the dot module, that's all it is. That's all the feature is. It's including this include file and that include file includes a whole bunch of other files and that's what actually creates all this stuff. There's the uh, CCK fields and the feature image cache presets. Close. Uh, that's the dot module, the strong arm, the views. You know, that's the exported view. And so that's where all of this is coming from. Now, the great thing about feature modules as, is these are just modules. So if you're a Drupal developer, if you want to add something here, uh, function, image, gallery, form alter, you can add a form alter to your module. Anything you can do on a regular module, you can do in here. So what I do is uh, I'll add custom CSS and I'll include them with my features so when I install them on sites, they don't look ass ugly. You know, it comes with some generic CSS like most modules do that have a UI. And so you can do that from right here. Uh, anything else your module needs to do. I got a module that has a, a menu alter that just defines a path. Uh, it's like a section front and it, it just creates a path simply for the, uh, the context to put crap on. Um, you know, stuff like that. Any questions so far? <coughs> Great, let's go install this module somewhere. So I got this nice, awesome local site over here and we're gonna to come to modules, 
and I am going to take this guy. Let's close you. Let's, uh, and I'm going to drop him right into my sites all files, my sites all modules. And now if I refresh this, I can scroll down and see there's my image gallery. And it's missing some stuff. Awesome. <coughs> Lightbox, strong arm, views attach. All right. This is not part of the presentation. There we go. There we go. Excellent. F5. Let's try this again. There we go. So now I can come in here to my image gallery and just so you don't think I'm being sneaky, we'll come over here to this content types page and all we got is page and story. If I come over here and turn on this feature, it's going to create all of that stuff for me. Enable all the other stuff. And there we go. We come over here to my content types. There are my two content types. We can come over to site building. We can see our image cache presets. We can see our views. Everything we created in that feature is now created when you turn that module on. So this is a really stupid, simple demonstration. You know, it's a, it's a little image gallery, but you can use your imagination. You can think anything that you can configure, more or less, you can just go ahead and export that into a Drupal module so the next time you need to use it, you just turn it on like that. Um, so that is the very basics of how a feature is created, how a feature is exported. Um, what do we got next? So organizing and sharing. Um, features are very easy to create, very easy to, uh, you know, get to other people, but they're, they're kind of weird in the whole Drupal community. They're not, they're not real, they're real modules, but a lot of people don't think they're real modules. They don't belong on Drupal.org because they're features. Um, so what Development Seed came up with, and they're the guys who created the features in the first place, was something called a feature server. And it's a really dumbed down version of the projects module on Drupal.org. Uh, a feature server cr creates a uh, project content type for you and a release content type for you. You create your projects, you add releases to it, you point people to your website, and now people can uh, download your features. This is code.developmentseed.org slash f server. This is their primary feature server. Um, and you can see they got lots and lots of different stuff in here. And the cool thing about feature servers is it's not just for features. You can upload modules, themes, installation profiles. So it's like having your own mini Drupal.org module theme repository on your website. Maybe stuff, you know, you have a very small glue module. You know, I got a module with like five lines of code that hides the add to cart button for Ubercart. I'm not putting that on Drupal.org, but maybe somebody else wants that, so I keep it in my uh, feature server. You know, it's kind of simple. Um, the idea Development Seed has for feature servers is that you got a feature server, I got a feature server, you know, Bob has a feature server, and we're all good at different things. You know, I'm fantastic with my events and image gallery content type. You know, Bob is great with uh, real estate, and so he's got some pretty cool real estate stuff. And so we kind of create this whole network of feature servers where we can pull from different resources with them. So I have a feature server right here. Uh, it's really simple. If I come to the projects, this is basically the same thing as that. Uh, I got two projects, and one is my image gallery. And there are my releases. So I just created a new release in my image gallery, so I'm going to add a new release. I'm going to choose the file. There it is. Open it. It's a major version, number two. 
uh, project, his image gallery, and this is the recommended version. Save it. Boom, now it's done. If I go back to my image gallery, it's listed as the recommended version on it. And now I can tell people, hey, you want a badass image gallery? Come to mrconnerton.com slash f server and you can download mine. And this integrates with Drush Make where all you gotta do is drop this one line into your make file and it pulls it straight down from other people's server. We'll show more about that later. Any questions on feature servers? You guys are awesome, you're geniuses. A Drush download? Uh, I, I, I don't know. You could probably do a, a Drush DL and then mark the source or we can try it and see what happens. Um, and so that's a feature server. And this is where this code right here, uh, feature server dot local slash F server, um, that is what you put when you're creating your features as your update URL. That way, if I update, if I add 2.1 to this and you downloaded my 2.0 version, it's gonna tell you, hey, Connerton just added a 2.1 version, here are the notes, you wanna download it, like it does in the other module. Awesome. So, that's a feature server. So what is Drush? Everybody in here knows what Drush is. Everybody saw it and used it, great, fantastic. Um, let's go ahead quickly. Oh, man, did you make a sandwich? That's my favorite Drush demo. Drush can do everything. Make me a sandwich. Uh, see, Drush can be kind of mean sometimes, so you gotta really get at it. There we go, thank you, thank you Drush, I appreciate that. So, Drush, uh, Drush DL help. Drush help DL. Um, what do we got here? So, destination source, the base URL which provides project release information and in XML defaults to so I think we can do um, Drush download image gallery source equals HTTP feature server dot local F server. I think the answer is yes. Um, it didn't quite like the way I did that though. Uh, but I'm sure there's a way. Oh, it says, uh, yeah, there we go. So it was just being angry with me. So that's how you do that. So Drush Make. Um, everybody knows what Drush Make is? Does anybody not know what Drush Make is? Raise your hand. Wow, you guys are awesome. So uh, I will s skip through this part really fast. I had my little just to recap real quick, Drush Make can pretty much do everything and make you coffee. It will download modules, download themes, download um, installation profiles. Uh, it will check out the code from wherever you want it to check out. It will download any file you want it to download. It will fetch and apply patches to pretty much anything you want to fetch and apply patches to. Um, it's, it's rather versatile, it's rather amazing. Uh, I, for deploying sites, getting sites up and running very fast, uh, it's really, really, really cool because uh, it gets it done fast and easy. Um, I'll show you how it works with, where is my mouse? I had a mouse. There it is. Um, I'll show you how it integrates with Featured, which is basically you add this line to your Drush Make file and now it's downloading from feature servers. So let's go ahead and do that real quick so we can all ooh and ah at it and then we'll move on to the fun part, which is installation profiles. <coughs> All right, so uh, let's just take this up here. All right, so I have an awesome make file right here. Uh, 
downloading Drupal, just grabbing a bunch of modules. Right here is uh, features I'm downloading. I'm just telling it, go get image gallery and grab it from featureserver.local. Uh, this is where you're gonna take advantage of, go get my module from my site, go get his module from his site, his feature from his site. Really cool stuff, and then I'm grabbing jQuery UI when I'm not downloading jQuery UI module, because I deleted that earlier. So let's go ahead and just get rid of that so it doesn't waste my time. All right. So now, Josh make, awesome make file, and I like to call prepare install, which just copies the default.settings.php over and sets up the permissions on it and stuff. So it reads the make file. Um, has anyone not seen this happen before? Why are you guys even in my session? It's for the profiles, isn't it? Any questions while this is? Hmm? Why didn't you raise your hand? It's okay, all right. He, he did it and I didn't pick on him. Until now, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I came up with it. I let some kid put it in his name, though. Oh, yeah. All right, that's not really what happened. I'm sorry, Dimitri. Um, so it's downloading stuff, downloading. Um, you can see it already downloaded my image gallery from local feature server. Uh, and long story short, I'm gonna install this site and turn on my image gallery module and proof all that stuff is made. Um, again, we'll, we'll, all we're really doing here is shaving time off of how long it takes us to get from point A, not having a site at all, but having they want a, a functional spec, to a point where let's actually do some real work, some custom development, some, you know, no, some, uh, you know, real work. The goal is you want to install a site and have all the base features there, done, finished, ready to go, all you got to do is apply your paint and spackle and you're done. So there is Drush Make. So what can't features do? Out of the box, features can't do a lot of stuff. Um, it can't export variables, it won't export blocks, uh, it doesn't do taxonomy terms. Basically anything that's not exportable, which means it doesn't have unique identifier associated with that piece of content, features isn't going to grab it. Um, there's lots of modules out there since features has come out that helps with this. Strongarm is one that I showed you, which is variables. Uh, boxes is a cool module. It, it's basically blocks with machine names. Um, and so you can, your custom, your custom boxes, your custom blocks can then be exported. Uh, if you create a view that's a block display, that will be exported. Um, you know, anything that's exportable that creates a block, that's okay. Uh, but like custom blocks, stuff like that, that doesn't work. Um, when you install a context module, that comes with its own built-in exportables. Uh, a lot of modules are starting to add importing and exporting to the code features. Uh, there's like two or three ways to do it. One of them is to use the features API. Uh, another way is CTools created a API for importing and exporting that ties in the features. So if you come across a module that you know, doesn't export or anything like that, the first place you could probably look is integrating it with CTools. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. I don't know. If something doesn't export, um, it, it doesn't mean it's the end of the day. Uh, maybe if you're a designer, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're a developer, uh, remember, these are, these are modules, so maybe you're, event calendar comes with taxonomy vocabularies and you have a preset of terms, use the install hook to create those terms uh, after the module's installed, stuff like that. So, you know, you can use your install hooks, your uninstalls, your update, uh, the module hooks to supplement what the base features are doing. Any questions about that? All right. Now let's have fun. The profile module is really, really cool. Um, it's easy peasy install profiles, which means it's easy peasy do-it-yourself distributions. Um, 
you know, your niche may be church websites. And what you can do is create the church uh, features, the podcast, the, the community groups, all of that. And then you create the make file, which the make file will go get all of that for you, but then it just leaves it there for you to install. The next step is the installation profile, which turns stuff on, configures stuff, does extra work that you can't do uh, out of the box. And so once you have an install profile, you can say install my Drupal site after I just got it with the make file using this install profile and that'll turn your modules on. That'll set the theme. That'll set some base content. That'll make you a sandwich. I don't know. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, it's my new, I've been doing this session for quite a while now and this is my new favorite part of the session. So profile, basically what it is, it's a, a, a out of the box it doesn't do anything by itself. It's just a group of API uh, functions that help you create installation profiles in a very, very easy way. Um, all you gotta do is come to this page and go down to the read the documentation and this will show you how easy it is to create an installation profile. So what I have here is you're just gonna create a folder and create three files. You need an info file, uh, a make file, uh, and a profile. Profile file. <laughs> anyway, so if you come in here, uh, this is gonna tell you everything you need in here. So we'll start with our, our, <coughs> our profile file. All that it takes, if you're afraid of PHP, don't worry about it. Profile expects that the dot .profile file initializes the profile APA with the following lines of code. Boom, that right there. That's all you need, all the PHP coding you gotta do. You cut and paste these two lines, and then right here, this is gonna be like your profile, whatever. You name that whatever your profile name is. In my case, it's awesome. You know, this could be news site, church site, uh, real estate site, whatever your install profile does. Once you save that, that's it, you're done. Uh, the next thing is gonna be the make file. Um, your installation profile can go and grab modules and download them for you um, during the Drush make phase. So this is, a, again, basically that same make file with a few different changes. Um, here are my modules. I'm getting that image gallery f uh, feature. Um, one thing I'm downloading under libraries which I guess if I was gonna organize this correctly, that would come down here. Uh, I'm gonna go get the latest version of Profiler, which is 2.0, beta two, and that goes into your sites all libraries directory. Um, and so I'm gonna go get that and just like that, uh, I'm downloading a, a special theme for my profile uh, and then jQuery UI. There's my make file, and then the info file is where all the magic happens. So like any module, theme, uh, installation profile, you need a name and description. This is my awesome profile. It is the most awesome profile ever. Start here at Drupal South Carolina first. So dependencies. I'm gonna say under dependencies, when you install, what modules do you want to turn on? I wanna turn on image gallery, and I wanna turn on the admin module. Image gallery is gonna say, hey, I depend on all these other modules, so it's gonna go ahead and turn all of that stuff on, uh, and admin is pretty. Uh, I'm gonna say, switch over to this theme. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, when you install, go ahead and create me the very first node is gonna be type page, the title is gonna be welcome to my site, the body is gonna be you know, this, and the UID is one. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I'm gonna say is set the front page to node slash one. And all of this stuff is nicely documented here in this readme off the profile page. Uh, it shows a summary of the files you're gonna have here. Um, again, this is a profile so you can have a dot install for custom stuff going on that happens after the installation process. And here's the dot info file, name, description, core, base. If this is uh, 
like a sub-profile of another profile. You can define that here. Uh, you can set your dependencies. Um, you can use this syntax right here to disable modules that Drupal core turns on by default. You know, what do I need the color module for? Turn that off. I don't need the book module. Turn that off. Setting themes, setting variables. You can create users with this. You can create nodes with this. You can create taxonomy terms this way. There's, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different things you can do here. I think there may be even more than what's uh, tagged here because they just did a new release, uh, but I'm not fantastically sure. But let's go ahead and take a look. So I have this installation profile. Um, again, it's these three files, profile, make, dot info. I'm gonna tar this up, awesome.tar, and I'm gonna go ahead Oh. Well, while that's happening, so I have this profile. I'm going to put it into a tar, and then I'm going back to my feature server. I'm going to upload that as an installation profile on my feature server. So later, using the power of just make, I can download that file again. Or I can tell other people, hey, check out my awesome installation profile. It's on my website, which I'll show you in a second. Hmm? Last night, what did I dream about? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't remember my dream, sorry. Um, any questions about any of this so far? We, we're gonna have plenty of time left over, I think. Yes, uh, the features module is required because the features module has the API that parses all those includes and includes them um, and uh, imports them and all that jazz. So. Here's my feature server. We're gonna come back here to projects. Here's my awesome profile. I've already uploaded this, but uh, you know, if I were to edit this, it's basically the same thing as any other module. Uh, I got the name, the machine name. I'm saying this is an installation profile. Uh, the packaging method, this is really cool. I can tell Drupal, instead of manually uploading files, it's gonna determine the releases based off of my Git tags based off of my uh, SVN repository tags. So I can select this, put in my uh, uh, repository URL right there, and then every time I tag a new release, this will create that new release for me. That's a really, really cool thing. Uh, the description, blah, 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 blah. So if I come back to here, here is my distribution. Basically, is right there. This profiler module includes a make file of all the stuff that's included. It includes the info inside profile, which turns all the crap on. That right there, I would call a distribution. And so if I wanted to install this, I'd create a make file. I'm saying I need Drupal 6 and go get my profile, uh, installation profile. So if we come over here, and say, yep, oh, there's nothing there. So let's go ahead and take you down here. And I'll become God for a moment. So there's my awesome make file I just showed you. Uh, let's remove that. All right, Josh, make awesome. Prepare, install. Yes. So now it gets Drupal. It got the information from my profile. It's going to download both of those, and then it's going to open up my profile and say, hey, I just found a make file called awesome.make, and now it's reading that make file. Uh, make files, uh, what's the word? Recursively. Uh, they're recursive. So you can put a make file and a make file and a make file and a make file. It's You'd never do that, but in this case, this is why it's really cool. 
um, you can have a make file that is your base make file. I'm always gonna have views, I'm always gonna have CCK, all this stuff, and then you can have a second make file that, and start dividing them up. Stuff like uh, this is my uh, new site make file, this is my event site, my real estate site make file. And then you add installation profiles for all that, and then you have a profile make file including a site specific profile uh, make file that includes the base make file. Whew, all right, so it's downloading all this stuff. So that's not actually, that's not installing for No, this is not installing Drupal for scratch. You still have to walk through the installation process. However, if we come here, I'm gonna say let's install with my awesome profile. I'll hit save and continue. I, that didn't work for some reason. Chomod, Chomod, Chomod. There we go, so distro, let's save and continue. Now it's reading my profile, it's turning on all those modules. Distro, Matthew, 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 Matthew. And save and continue. Now I'm done installing, and normally after you're done installing and you click on take me to your new site, you come to the Garland, welcome to your site, nothing's installed, but this time, because of our installation profile, that's not the case. Uh, the theme was set. Uh, for some reason that admin wasn't turned on, and I don't know why. Man, I have a slow local computer today. But anyway, there it is, a profile. It turns on the theme for me. That's my home page that I created. Um, and then if I were to come to admin modules and stuff, all those, uh, that feature module I created is there, turned on, installed, ready to go, maybe, hopefully. Um, and there's an installation profile in a box. Uh, we got 18 minutes to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about we get regarding all of this. Um, one thing before I go on, um, Drush, if you don't know, if you don't, if you aren't using Drush yet, I did a Drupal Dojo not too long ago on how to install Drush on your server. Um, and I cover shared servers, VPS, you can pretty much install Drush any way you want uh, on a Linux server. Uh, as long as you have shell access. So check out the Drupal Dojo if you have that issues of shared servers, stuff like that. Um, and, and that's it, so any questions? Anything at all? Say that again. Pressflow is a fork. It's not an install profile. Um, so yeah, you can you can use all of this on Pressflow, from what I understand. Shouldn't get confused at all. Profiler is great for if you need to create an install profile but you don't want to hunt and find for the docs that don't exist on how to create an install profile in Drupal 6. Yeah, profile is just for installing. Um, client needs a change. Uh, <coughs> that, that you're going into deployment and stuff like that. Let me give you a quick example of how we can use features for deployment. Um, if I come over here to my local site, which is over here, say I edit this view, and I go, let's sort by title alphabetically. 
So this view is in code, it's created by the feature, and I am now changing this view. What this is gonna do is over in my features, it's gonna list my feature is overridden versus being in default. Now, I have two choices uh, right now. I can either uh, revert what I did and go back to what's in code, or I can take the changes I made and write them to code. Uh, and the way you can do that is with Drush. My favorite Drush command. So let's go back to my new site, local site, W public, so Drush feature list is gonna list all the features I have, and it shows me that image gallery is overridden. So now, I am gonna tell Drush to take all those overridden changes and write them to the feature. Overwrite the code with the new changes, and I do that by saying Drush feature update the image, I mean the, uh, the module, or in this case, Drush fu image gallery. It's gonna say, hey, this module already exists. Are you sure you want to overwrite this? I'm going to say yes. And now all those changes I made are written into the code. So if I come back here and refresh this, it's not going to be overridden anymore. Everything is back to a default state. Now the way this works with uh, deployment and making changes with client is your code is in version control, it's in Git. And so I have that repository checked out on my server as development. And I have it checked out on the production server as a, a production tag. And the client says, I want you to change this view, sort them in title. So what you do is on your dev server, you say drush, you know, you make the change, drush fu uh, that feature. Git is gonna say, hey, you change files, you say okay. Uh, git add, git commit, git push origin master, uh, or git tag, whatever, new live release, and then on your production server, you can pull those changes in. And when you pull those changes in on your production server, it's gonna be the new default state, clear caches, it's now done, it's live. Uh, so that's a nice, a very simplified version of how you can push changes to your uh, production environment if you're using this multi-tier system. Um, as far as features, I always want my features to be in a default state. Uh, I, there's no reason for the features to be overridden. If it's overridden, you either need to write those changes into the code or you need to uh, revert it. It's just data that's easy to get lost or lose for no reason. Um, and so, like I said, on Drush, you can do a feature uh, FL, the show on, then do a Drush FU or if you have lots of features, you can do a drush fu all, and that will uh, make you feel a little better inside as you're reverting your features. Uh, if you're having an issue reverting features, you can do drush uh, fu image, image gallery, uh, image gallery, and then tag on force, and that, that will, normally if you just fu an image gallery, it will, uh, um, only see what's overridden and write those changes. If you add the force, it, no matter what, it's just gonna rebuild that feature based on what's going on uh, in code, I mean in the database. So, what about you? I know you got a question. You've been begging all day to ask me a question. All right, no questions from him. Absolutely, absolutely, because Reading from the code is gonna be a lot faster than reading from the database, uh, and that's less intensive. Um, and with all this stuff being in code, that's exactly what's being read from, all these views, all of that. It's, n it's not gonna be read from the database, it's gonna be in the, uh, the code. Well, at, at this point, features is a make your own adventure book. Um, it really depends on how you wanna do features. If you're 
making features to reuse over and over again, then yeah, you're gonna to wanna to keep that feature up to date uh, if you have to. If the update to context really doesn't do anything on the actual context side of it, uh, then no, you don't have to rebuild the feature. And nowadays, uh, module maintainers are pretty good at saying, hey, you know, this is gonna break this functionality uh, with this new release. Um, personally, uh, when I'm using reusing features, it really just depends. Uh, it's very easy for your features to fork. Uh, I got the image gallery on client A site and they want a slideshow with little thumbnails beneath them. But on client B, they don't want a slideshow with little things beneath them. They want uh, a big old grid with image box. And so, you know, 90% of that feature is the same except for that very last, how's it actually being displayed? You can do two things. You could just fork the features and start maintaining two different features or you can have a base feature which is your information architecture of uh, the content types and all that stuff and then have multiple display features of this adds a slideshow block view to it, this adds a gallery view to it, this does the hokey pokey. So really it, it depends on how you wanna use features. Um, I'm using features with some clients where the there's, we, we're not using these features. We're just packing a bunch of crap into them simply to get that stuff in code so it's easier to migrate from dev to staging to production. Um, there's no reason to reuse them. Did, did you have a question? Sorry, I thought I saw you do a little. I like questions. Any more questions? How many people are gonna start using features in Profiler now? Nice, all right, well, let me know if you have any questions and if you wanna know more about the whole dev staging product and features thing, you can come ask me about that. Thank you. What about this? I can help with that. Like we have the same problem. What would happen if you did this? You gave me a I found a problem. How do you do that? It's like this. Well, I disagree with that. Really? Who would have thought of that? Let's put the word out. WebOS. An OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices. HP Slate and WebOS. HP. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you.